The Final Furlong Podcast is proudly brought to you by Jeff Banks Bet. Get up to 500 pounds refunded as real money for new Jeff Banks online accounts after your first month of betting. Use promo code FFP500 at jeffbanks.bet. And by BetterHelp. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Our listeners get 10% off your first month. So give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com forward slash F-U-R-L-O-N-G. Welcome to the weekend forecast. It's a forecast of rain by the sounds of things. On the final Furlong podcast, I'm Amos Kennedy, joined once again by the man who tipped a 10 to 1 winning nap, not so sleepy, lived up to his name with a fantastic performance. Andy Newton, take a bow, sir. Well done, Andy. Super duper, wasn't it, that one? That was fantastic. What a great way for that legend of a horse to bow out as well. And it wasn't quite 10 to 1, but it was still a winning nap. And there was egg all over my face and all over Andy's face because Peter was adamant this horse would win. And we were adamant he was a take on merchant. We were wrong. He was right. Welcome back, Peter Michael, after your winning nap of economics in the Irish Champion Stakes. Cheers, lads. Thank you. Good to be back. We're going to be focused on Newmarket and the Curra this week. We are looking at the Judmont Royal Lodge to kick things off. And the betting with Jeff Banks is 15 to 8. Luther, he is the favourite from Wimbledon Hawkeye, who's 3 to 1. Angelo Buenarotti, 4 to 1, having won the Convivial Maiden last time out, a million euro justified purchase. Uh, now in the care, having bounced around various different trainers of Rafe Beckett, puppet master for Aidan O'Brien, a five to one shot, and uh, Royal Playwright, uh, ten to one. All right, let's begin with Peter Michael, returning guests. Who do you like in the Judmont Royal Lodge? Well, the ground is going to be a massive factor this weekend. You would imagine at Newmarket, um, the going is practically heavy as we speak there today. <clears throat> There's fourteen nils roughly due tomorrow as well. Now that doesn't mean it's going to come. We know what the weather forecast can be like. So yeah. we, uh, I, I'm sitting here today looking at this and looking from, you know, horses who are mudlarks, basically. But we could end up with, you know, good to soft ground come come Saturday, even though I think that's doubtful. So I'm going to be basing my picks on pretty soft ground. And for that fact, the only horse there with proper proven form on that ground is the O'Brien horse, Puppet Master. Now, um, I know Brian Means horse is one on soft ground as well, but that was a four on a race. So out of the top three in the betting or top four, um, I'd be looking at him. But, I mean, you have the likes of Luther, who's been very impressive in his two wins. And in his second in Salisbury, he was beaten by New Century, who's gone on to Frank the Form, I think, in Woodbine. It was in a grade one. Wimbledon Hawkeye has raced three times, only been beaten by three horses. Two of them are unbeaten, the Lion in Winter and um, Ancient Truth. And the only other horse that beat him was Seagulls 11, who's rated 112. So he brings rock-solid form as well into this race. But I have no idea if they'll go on the ground. I, I, I just don't know. Whereas I know Puppet Master will go on the ground. And his form is not as good as the others in my mind. But with him proven on the ground, I'd have to go for him against the field here. Uh, it's a very solid argument, and the ground is going to be real tricky. It's officially soft ground right now, but the forecast is pretty awful for the next couple of days. So it's going to be yeah, soft I'd at least. I'd, I'd be amazed if it wasn't speak. that. Watch I, I, I watched Fighter Command pull Kieran Schumark's arms out um, <laughs> the whole way through there in the 4.30, and it looked deeply unpleasant weather and deeply yeah. unpleasant ground. So. Yeah. I can't imagine it changing too much uh, or, or changing for the better too much. And the forecast ground yeah. yesterday was good. Literally, as we're recording at 5.35, it's officially soft ground right now. I'd say it's worse than that. Um, so it is. It, it's heavy. So with that in mind, Andy, we're looking, we're looking for national hunt type performers <laughs> in this weather, but they're, these horses are a couple of years away from competing in the Triumph Hurdle as of yet. But of these, which one is the most likely Triumph Hurdle contender and therefore the winner of this race? <laughs> well, I agree with Peter, to be honest with you. I mean, I was literally going to say the same thing about the ground. I mean, I think tomorrow is pretty grim at Newmarket. Um, Saturday looks all right, but I think the damage will would have been done by then with today and, and, and Friday's downpours. Um, so, yeah, I mean, obviously... Guineas trial, last winner to take this and then go on to win the Guineas was the mighty Frankel. See, Luther is a Frankel Colt. 
Um, we ain't so got no Frankel in this race, son. We've got no Frankel. That's the problem. It's not the greatest renewal, is it? Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, Luther looked quite impressive last time at, at Haydock. There's plenty more to come there, but you know, it was only a listed race, wasn't it? So it's stepping up a fair bit here. I did text Charlie to ask him this morning, but I think after the barrage that we've given him in the last few weeks, he's probably put out a restraining order on me. He hasn't come back <laughs> as yet. Just to ask him, you know, but the form of the fellows camp at the moment is a little bit questionable. I think they've only had one winner in the last 18, so that would be a tiny worry. Um, but, but you know, and it's soft ground, completely unknown. All its wins have come on a lot quicker. Same same with the Wimbledon Hawkeye. I mean, as Peter said, that's probably the best form in the race. You know, second in the Acom and, and, and uh, you know, the line in winter, if that, that was in here, would FOB favourite, wouldn't it? So, but again, soft ground is the unknown. Same with Royal Play Riot. That was third to um, to one of the naps a while ago, field of gold at Sandown, but it just looked a little bit one paced, I think. I think it ran out in the front that day, didn't it? And then just sort of got swallowed up and didn't really have much else to give. So, I'd be a bit worried about that. Um, what's the other one on there? Angelo uh, Bernarotti. Beckett in decent order, isn't he, at the moment? Yeah. Probably- Probably got the best strike rate of all these trainers on show here at the moment, 36%. So, uh, stayed on well last time, ran, ran in the Coventry as well, didn't it? But again, you know, repeating myself here, soft ground, unknown on. So, you know, based on that, you have really got to just go with, with Puppet Master. Um, you know, they're giving it a couple of months off. And I think when I looked yesterday, O'Brien did have an army of entries in this. Um He's obviously coming down on on this one to um, you know to sort of get him. I think he's had seven winners, isn't he, in this? And he's he only needs one more to be the the outright record trainer in the Royal Lodge. I think he's equal at the moment. So um, so yeah, I think there's plenty of value with Puppet Master. What I don't know what it is nine to two, five to one. I reckon it'll be a fair bit shorter than that on the day once people get stuck into Ryan Moore and O'Brien and the soft factor. Um, and then, like you said, Peter, Law of Design is the only other one that we know will definitely be okay on the ground. What it beat last time at Ascot, no one knows. I mean, the only thing you could take out, I mean, James Doyle was on it, wasn't he, last time? He's, he's jumped ship to, to Wimbledon Hawkeye, which is probably the right thing to do with the form of that one. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if Law of Design ran a bit better than a 12 to 1 shot but yeah let's, let's just double up with Puppet Master I suppose I'm taking you both on with he's not the best horse in the race but he might be best suited to the conditions law design lads I, I don't know if Jeff Banks has bumped his head or something but 20 to 1 well yeah I mean it's definitely as we said that's 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 the very, you know, of the outsiders, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you there, mate. Well, I tell you, it's going, the way the ground is going to be tomorrow in New Mar- uh, Newmarket and probably in Saturday, it's going, like, throw up some very big price winners. So maybe that could be one, Emmett. Yeah, I, I, think it, I think it might. I'm going to check. This is something we should have done, or at least I should have done before recording but uh, why, why would why would i why would i do you know research before we actually come on the air um what exactly is the forecast for new market england for the next few days awful yeah, 14 14 mils bad. tomorrow and saturday's and, and, and clear. Saturday, okay but um as i say I think damage might be done then yeah so it's meant to be a nice yeah, beautiful well, sunny day on saturday but that's no good <laughs> <laughs> to those well, running, what's it. going to do? It's just, it's just going to make it tacky. Yeah, that's the case, which makes it even harder to predict what's going to happen. Yeah, I, I, I think Angela Bonarotti is a very exciting horse. Um, a little bit disappointed that Shaw was beaten on his next start, but I'd say he was beaten by a good horse at York. To be fair, uh, Wimbledon Hawkeye obviously brings the best form to the race. I would say, um, I'm slightly confused that Puppet Master is the one they've gone with, given the strength and depth they have, but. And I'm slightly confused that Acapulco Bay is not running this weekend. But anyway, they obviously know a whole lot more about that than we do. And while Aiden's got a good record in this race, the better horses will be in the Beresford. Like that's the real one where you'll see the, the better quality of horse in that. Um, I think 20 to 1 about Law Design is way too big. And I suspect that because 
A, he's Brian Mean, who for whatever reason gets no respect, and two, he's a gelding. He's almost just dismissed by the odds compilers at Jeff Banks' bet. I think you've made a mistake. It's almost certain I'm the one making the mistake and I'm overreading this, but I thought that was a really nice performance at Ascot. We know the wheels will spin on the soft ground, and I will take that 20 to 1 um, for the Royal Lodge with Jeff Banks' bet. Peter, your selection is with Puppet Master, and Andy, you're with the Edna Bryan Horse yeah. as well. Yeah, I think Puppet Master, and I think, you know, I, I, I think of the bigger prices, Lord Design, definitely. I mean, me and won this in 2007 as well, which is um, just worth mentioning with a horse called City Leader uh, a while back now, obviously. But, um, yeah, you just got to go with the ground horses here, I think, in, in a race that, you know, there's a lot of potential with, with, with a lot of these horses, and we, and we don't know how good, you know, the likes of Luther and, um, you know, Angelo uh, Bunarotti are going to be. But Puppet Master, mate, for me. I'd have major concerns about all of the horses on the front end on the going. Um, the only one I wouldn't be worried about, and he's not on the front end of the market, and maybe he should be, is Royal Playwright. Um, Arabian Queen won on soft ground. So he should be okay on it. Would, but, you, would you have concerns for Puppet Master on the soft ground? Oh, no, 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 he doesn't. No, 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 no okay. he's already, he's already no proven problem. it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm well, talking exactly. about yeah, Wimbledon, yeah. Hawkeye, Luther, and the, Angelo Buonarotti. Yeah, like, well, they, they they bring like they, they, that. Um, <coughs> Luther, I mean, he's he was so impressive last time out. Yeah, he really was. And even the time before that, he ran a lovely race behind. I think uh, I don't have it in front of me now. Is it New Century? The one it? The one who he's gone on, who so. Oshin rode to, to victory in Canada afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like he, like. Yeah, if if it was good ground, they wouldn't be going for Puppet Master. Put it to you like that. Yeah, they'd probably be going for Luther, I'd say, or maybe Wimbledon Hawkeye. But look, they could turn up on it and love it or hate it. But you you can't be tipping them up if at that price if they're not proven on it. Yeah, I agree. Um, Luther's dam did all her racing on predominantly good ground. I'd have concerns. I'd have concerns now about those at the top end of the market. I think they're the better long-term Frankel, prospects. Frankel did obviously win on soft ground, um, so you know there is there is bits and bobs to cling to. Well, now you're getting into the science of how how influential is the sire versus how vital is the dam. Exactly. And I'd argue exactly. the dam is more val- is more vital, but we'll never get a bloodstock company sponsoring the show if we keep saying stuff like that. <laughs> Brought to you by Bally Lynchster. Um, right, 225 is the Judmont. You can send your mare to Judmont and be serviced by all the top stallions there. Um, the Judmont Chiefly Park Stakes, six furlongs and barbouche for Jerlines, one of our favourite guests, Colin Keane, uh, a red-hot favourite for this one, five to four with Jeff Banks' bet from Lake Victoria, who kind of subs in. It's a real shame that Fairy Godmother's out for the rest of the season, but she remains an exciting prospect for next year. Nine to four. And then it's pretty much whatever price you want about the rest from Jeff Banks' bet. Daylight sevens, uh, Silidin elevens, Ravika fourteens, Leovani sixteens, uh, Arabian Dusk twenties, and Magic Mild uh, 50 to one shot. I think the market is very much saying which of the two Irish horses is going to win. Do you see it that way, Peter Michael? Yeah, well, these are two fillies I really rate highly. Um, I really hit rate Babouche very highly, and same with Lake Victoria. The last time I was on, I didn't think Lake Victoria would have, she, like we were on on the Thursday, and she was running on Sunday, so I didn't, I wouldn't have thought she would have been declared for the race, but she was. She was declared, and obviously she won with bedtime story underperforming. But um, just the way she races, there's a, there's more there. I don't think she's shown what she can do yet. I think there's more there. Um, and Babouche, again, I t- put her up against Whistle Jacket because I'm a big fan of her. But look, again, we're dealing with possibly heavy ground, which is uh, an unknown for these two. Um, but if you go into the breeding of Babouche, his full brother, Zurinsk, was one and soft and one and soft to heavy. And as I said, he's a full brother to Babouche by Kodiak, who normally love, you know, digging the ground. So there's, on the pedigree side of it, you have to be optimistic that Babouche will go on the ground. But, you know, I think Babouche has a very good turn of foot and that could be blunted on, on, on heavy ground. And in saying that, though, she does hit the line very strongly as well. But I guess that's just what all top class horses do. They quicken and stay. Um, for that fact that, you know, I know Quiet Reflection, the dam of Lake Victoria loved soft ground. And yeah, one on heavy as well. Form on it. 
Yeah, I, I just have to go for Babush in this over Lake Victoria, I'm afraid. Um, you you said five to four, but I can see there's a seven to four about. I, I, I Even though the pedigree suggests that Babush will go on the ground, you still never know until they try it. But I don't think you can get more of a positive from the pedigree than you can from Babush that she will go on the ground. Obviously, with this ground being possibly bottomless, it's going to bring more and more stamina into it, which will suit Lake Victoria. Probably more so than Babouche, but I think Babouche might just be a little bit too good for her. And I wouldn't rule out the French horse either, Daylight, mm. who obviously has won on very soft ground and was third behind Whistle Jacket. But I just think these top two probably might be a length or two lengths, even on this ground, too good for Daylight. So I'll go with my Philly Babouche. I think there'll be a lot of people who agree with you, Peter. And to be fair, Andy, she has gone and taken on the boys and beaten them fair and square. Um, the question then is, which one are you with? Well, yeah, it looks, it does look a bit of a two horse shootout, doesn't it? Um, and yeah, the betting is sort of quite tight between both of them now, isn't it? Which, you know, you, you, you know you're going to get, you're going to get people in both camps, let's, let's be honest. Um, and you can make arguments for, for both of them. Yeah, the big, the, the interesting one with Lake Victoria is that. Um, you know, she's stepping down in trip, and she for the first time. All, all runs have been over seven furlongs. Um, you know, last time out took a little bit of time to get going over over seven. So, is the six going to be in her favour? The ground will obviously help um, in that regards because it, you know, like Peter said, Babouche's turn of foot might get a little bit blunted. Um, but that that would be the problem. I mean, I had a look, and in that race um, last time, she she traded twenty one. Point zero in running, um, which is not surprising. I thought it might have even been bigger than that. Uh, late, late Victoria, that is, because you wouldn't have called her the winner, you know, a couple of furlongs out, would you? So that's that's the sort of thing you could probably cling to. Obviously, O'Brien's had a, a, a top little spell in this race, won it four years on the spin, didn't he? I think he, it's another one. He needs one more win in it to be the all-time record holder. For It'll the, be a big weekend know, for him. Race. Yeah, he could, he could he could nab a few few records and that. So it's not that he needs any more, obviously. But um, in terms of the Guineas next year, I mean, the last horse to do the double was Special Duty in back in two thousand nine, two thousand and ten. Um, obviously, last year's winner Porta Fortuna came very very close um, of breaking that whatever it is thirteen fourteen year sort of barren spell of, of um, you know, the, the Sheepy Park going on to win the win the 1,000 guineas. Irish have a top record in it, obviously. But um, I think, but I'm just going to have to go with Babushri really, just based on the fact of, of, of the, I'm not totally sure about the, the drop back in trip for Lake Victoria, um, personally. That that would be the only thing I'm clinging to. Of the others, I think the Ed Walker camp at the moment are a little bit out of form and, mm. I just think I know it won the Lauva last time that Salad uh, Saladine, but I just think with with six run now it's, it looks a tad exposed and and, and I'm, I'm happy to overlook that one. But I'd rather if you know, if you are going to have a little punt on some of the outsiders, you know the two French ones possibly. I know Daylight's uh, that ran all right in there against Whistle Jacket in, in the, um, uh, last time out when it was third in the, in, in the Mornay. But I think the the other one that's probably a little bit more interesting is is Ray Vecker. Um, only because it's had two runs, there could be a bit more. Um, absolutely, you know, dotted up at Chantilly last time at over over six furlongs, one by five lengths. But the key was it won in soft ground that day, so we know the ground's going to be absolutely fine. I obviously think she's fairly decent to be sending her over for a Group One, so that would be the sort of one if there's going to be a shock to run a little bit better than a ten to one shot. But I'm um, with Babushka, Babushka. There's a quote from the Connections of Daylight about how disappointed they were to be beaten last time out. Hmm. What was that? What was it? One and a half lengths, maybe? Something I'm a little bit disappointed. I could do the French accent, but nobody really wants to hear that. <laughs> I'm a little bit disappointed. Obviously, this was a very high-class field, and Daylight hasn't been able to fight for the win. We had a bad draw, and then we had to wait until it was too late for the gap to appear. She was very calm before and after the race, and I think she's the best sprinting juvenile filly in Europe. She'll head to the Cheveley Park at Newmarket, and despite the circumstances, the way she flew home, you've all been able to see she's a filly of great talent. Pauline Sherbop, owner's representative. I mean, if if I've just finished 
If my horse has just finished third in a group one behind a, a proper group one performer and a Coventry winner, I'm delighted. But no, she was not happy. And the horse has won on very soft ground and performed really, really well on good to soft. I think she's interesting. Um, Miguel Barcelona over for the ride. Look, Lake Victoria wins this. I think if it was good ground, Babouche wins. But it's not. It's soft ground. And I think Lake Victoria is going to win. Um, it, should, it does feel like a substitute for Fairy Godmother, which is an extraordinary thing to be saying about an unbeaten Group 1 winner. But that's how it feels. She has experience of Newmarket having been there before. She can go to the front if they want. And front runners have an advantage at Newmarket, as we'll discuss in a second. Her brother, the Equator, won on heavy ground. I think that was his only win. Um, and quite reflection, as Peter said, relished the mud. One on heavy, one group races on soft ground. Um, she's fast. She's not just classy, she's fast. And I think this is going to play out to her strengths more so than Geraldine's is Philly. I really like Barbouche. She's cost me before. Maybe she's going to slap me in the face again, but Lake Victoria for me. And I might do the forecast, Lake Victoria in daylight. Don't, don't tell, don't tell Geraldine's. Don't tell Joe Lanza said that. He he will not be happy. Um, I tell Jeff. Yeah, yeah, well, no, that's okay, because he's the one who's going to be paying me the winnings. Thanks very much. Um, Peter, your final selections, you're with Babouche? Yeah, look, I was saying earlier, it's hard to tip up a horse that's unproven on the ground, but if Pedigree's going to point you towards whether a horse will go on the ground or not, I can't point you more than it is with Babouche. So, yeah. I, d- I really like both Babouche and Lake Victoria. I think they're two of the best fillies we've seen this year. But I just have to go for Babouche, yeah. They're the very same on RPRs. They're the very same officially. Babouche is ahead on time form, 125p versus 122p. But they're basically the same horse, except one's won a group one over slightly further that might actually be perversely beneficial to her in this race, and she might handle the ground better. But that's a guess, too. Maybe... Maybe Lake Victoria doesn't handle the ground, but I think she'll be fine on it. Um, Andy, final selection for you? Yeah, same, but uh, Babouche main selection, but I just think the the other the the Aga Khan horse um, Ray, Ray is it called Ray Evka? I think that is the one that might sort of nab the forecast if we're going to do one proven on soft. Um, should be more to come from her, I think. But yeah, Babouche main. Yeah, and it is fascinating that um, the Gaffard Stable are sending her over as well. The Final Furlong Podcast is proudly brought to you by Jeff Banks Bet, where tradition meets cutting-edge technology. And with major flat racing festivals on the horizon and the new jump season about to kick off properly, it's time to leave behind the corporate bookmakers who don't value your loyalty. At this point, you've got to be fed up of their restrictions, endless affordability checks, and losing out on incentives just because you dare to win a bet. Jeff is the bookmaker fighting for your right to bet, giving you the freedom to enjoy British and Irish racing the way it should be, and you can watch all that racing on the Jeff Banks Bet app. So say goodbye to bookies who want you to lose your hard-earned money on their online casinos and say yes to unbeatable odds and a bookmaker that truly values your custom Jeff Banks Bet. Final Furlong Podcast listeners who sign up to Jeff Banks Online using the promo code FFP500 can get 10% of any net losses returned as cash after your first month of betting up to £500. It's an offer you won't see anywhere else. Visit jeffbanks.bet today and enter promo code FFP500 and join the excitement. That's jeffbanks.bet using promo code FFP500 because your betting experience deserves more. To the middle park, and the question is, which of the Aidan O'Brien horses wins the middle park? Last horse to win this race and go on to win the 2,000 guineas was... Rodrigo. Yes! Back in 1992, 1991 for this race, but 92 what, for the Classic. Which jockeys, which jockeys rode Rodrigo in this race oh. and in the Guineas? Because oh. they were two different jockeys. Was Leicester one of them? Leicester won the Guineas. Oh, Don't tell me you've forgotten who won of them. <laughs> you can't ask that question and then not know. Who. No, I know. Who was on the middle... Does Peter know? Willie. Wow. No. I wasn't How long ago was this, lads? 91 and 92. 92. 91. I was, yeah, so I don't. Yeah, Willie Carson rode um, in this race. And then I remember Leicester doing the Bizzo 
it was weird because I was actually at a football match watching, well, as a football match, uh, Palace against QPR away at QPR when, when the old, um, when the 2000 Guineas was on that year when he won it. So, just are you ever that, just, not at the football when there's a big racer? <laughs> yeah, no, I, it's just weird things that you sort of, you know, like the old, <laughs> where were you when Diner died business and all that kind of stuff. Just, you were at a football yeah. match, right? I was at a football match, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry, it's not a football podcast, as I got slapped last week um, by Emmett for hey, talking about hey, anyway, it. But. It it could be sometimes. Uh, who knows? All right, whistle jacket is the odds-on favorite with Jeff Banks bet ten to eleven on. Um, or 11 to 10 on, I should be saying. Uh, Ides of March, stable companion, is an 11 to 4 shot. Shadow of Light, who was due to run last week, came out because of the ground. So he's going to love this then. Uh, 13 to 2. Gee, I wonder what's going to happen there. Black Forza, 10 to 1. Defense Minister, 16s. Intrusively, 25s. Jouncey, 33s. And Dash Dizzy, a 66 to 1 shot. Peter Michael, is this between the Ballydoyle front two? And if so, which of the two of them comes out on top? Yeah, well, I, I think Whistle Jacket will win this. Um, I think he's crying out for seven furlongs. I remember. I think so too. On Twitter about. I posted a comment on Twitter about it, and um, some guy who used to work for Godolphin. Imagine this now. He used to work for Godolphin. Said he wouldn't stay seven furlongs in a horse box. And this chap used to work for Godolphin. I don't know how he race reads. Jesus. But um, well, yeah. Uh, John Seriously. knows his stuff, to be fair, and everybody's in touch with their opinion. But Sarah Lynham is very much of the view he'll stay a mile. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I don't know how you could look at this horse and say that. And you couldn't think that this horse doesn't have a hope of staying seven furlongs. I just don't know how you can race read that, looking at the facts of how the horse runs. Sarah's um, point is that he, he is a full brother to Little Big Bear, but he doesn't take after him at all. Um, and if, if anything, he takes after some of the other horses who who did stay. American Graffiti stayed ten furlongs. Lincoln Lara stayed um, a mile three and a half. That's She thinks he's more in that. He's got speed, obviously. Yeah, well, if, but. If, if Whistle Jacket doesn't stay seven furlongs, I give up. Like, there's no hope he won't stay seven for long. If he ever gets a chance to show it, he's going to improve for it. Um, so six furlongs and heavy ground is as close as he's going to get to seven furlongs. Um, and I think he's just going to go from the front and just stay there. I think he'll gallop them into the ground. Uh, I, I like defence defence minister at a price, but again, I just have no clue about the ground for him and whether or not he's in the league of these horses. But he is a likable horse. He's unbeaten. He's two from two. And Safi Osborne was very taken by him when he won his first race and said it was all about learning. And he went on to progress from that and won after that. But yeah, on the ground, the way the horse is going to be ridden, the whistle jacket's going to take a lot of beating here, I'd say. Yeah, he was due to run in the Mill Reef, Defence Minister, um, but came out due to unsuitable ground. That unsuitable ground was heavy. So oh, there you go. Oh, I didn't even know that. It could be could be a problem. Um, Shadow of Light came out due to unsuitable ground. That unsuitable ground was heavy. So yeah, um, it, it, look, unless it massively dries up, which the forecast is not telling us that's what's going to happen, um, then I'm not sure if these two will take their chance. And even if they do, are they going to be all right on it? Uh, I have no idea. Uh, look, I, I'm with you. I was very close to backing Ides of March. Real close to backing him. Um, and he doesn't need to improve that much to be able to go and win this race. I think he's a fascinating runner in it. But, Andy, what what is your overall take on this? Yeah, I mean, it's just pretty pretty boring, isn't it? But I'm, I'm you know, whistle jacket camp as well. Um, I mean, look, there are a few little things to sort of, you know, it has thrown one, not thrown one in, but it has sort of, shown a little bit of vulnerability a couple of times, isn't it? Um, but I don't, this, this isn't the greatest renewal, let's be honest, is it? Um, no, of this, of it's this. not. So, you know, based on that, um, you know, it, it's very difficult to get away from Whistle Jacket. If you really want to cling to stuff, I mean, there's only eight runners. Does the draw really play a part? But seven of the last eight have been drawn fairly low, one to four. Whistle Jacket's in five. But, I mean, I'm not really going to sort of cling much to that Brian's obviously got a record in this one it's seven times um, the only other thing you might be able to you know go against it is O'Brien's record with his two year olds at Newmarket is not as probably as good as you would think only five 
from his last 42. Um, so about a 12% strike rate of his two-year-olds here. So there's something there. But, you know, like Peter said, probably what's further already, the rain, the soft ground, that's going to, you know, or probably make this more of a seven furlong race, even though it's over six. Um, and, and yeah, it's just hard to sort of find, you know, come a bit like last week with the Mill Reed, really. I mean, there might be a couple of non-runners in this. I mean, like you say, Shadow of Light, uh, Defence Minister. I mean, they've had a bit of a shock them at Rocker at the moment, haven't they? Because they did, they supplemented the horse for that. Oof. Pretty sure they've supplemented it for this as well, haven't they? Um, Ooh. I've, I've I don't have stuck for a short of a few... I don't oh, you stole my for... line, damn it! <laughs> I'd be more worried if I was an owner like myself and I used to own horses, then yeah. I'd feel sorry for them. But I, I think... Yeah, I, know, I know what you mean, but they're still, you know, they're still sort of chucking... Uh, whatever, it's, I think it was only five... No, I get you. But it might be I get ten, you, yeah. Whatever. But um, you know, it, it is what it is. But they obviously trying to trying to get you know run into it, for, and it's and it's probably a bit better than it is. But it's you know it's rated ninety. Whistle jacket's rated one one five. So you know, there's a twenty five pound gap there. Um, so so that would be that would be the thing. Look, it's just sort of it's not whistle jacket by default, but it, it sort of is if that makes sense because this is one of the probably worst middle parks that <laughs> seen in a long time um, and. He's by far the best horse anyway. So 10 to 11 now. Wouldn't be surprised if it's a little bit more odds on than that come the day. Yeah, I agree. I uh, I think this is dangerously simple stuff. Mm. Ryan Moore goes Can to I the front. Conference? Good night. Over. Well, I, I put if, if it was good ground, I wouldn't be tipping him. No, neither would I. For something to beat if, him. if it was good ground, I'd go Ides of all. March yeah. straight away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because he he really doesn't need to improve that much, and he's clearly improving. Yeah. Um, Monumental got turned yeah. over today, but uh, the Group Three performance was really good. And straight after that race, Aiden said Middle Park. Um, he got a one hundred and seven RPR for that race. Whistle Jacket was one hundred and eight at the Curra behind Barbouche, one hundred and eleven the last day. It's not massive amounts of improvement he needs to find. Uh, one hundred and nineteen RPR for Rides of March, one hundred and twenty three for Whistle Jacket. Time form is 124, Whistle Jacket, P, 121, Ides of March. He doesn't need to improve that much. I don't know if Ides of March is going to like this ground. I really don't. His sister was beaten on it. Um, maybe he'll be fine. Maybe he'll love it, but it'll be no problem to Whistle Jacket. He'll actually, it'll be a benefit to him. On the front end, good night, good luck, it's over. Like you say, yeah, especially out from the out, out the front, it's it's going to be difficult for the ones yeah. behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he looks uh, solid. Yeah, he wins this. He wins it, and he wins it pretty soon. You're not telling me Black Forza, who blew the start in Kentucky, is going to go beat Whistle Jacket in a Group One over six furlongs on soft ground. Nah, Whistle Jacket no. goes and wins. Sign up now to Jeff Banks and take his money on this race. Use the promo code FFP five hundred. And you actually get a percentage of your net losses back at the end of the month after your first month of betting. So, technically speaking, you can't lose. You can lose, gamble responsibly. But technically speaking, you can't lose. Whistle jacket, just how far? A length, probably. And people will four, be saying afterwards, lengths, oh, it wasn't it doesn't four lengths. Oh, I like oh, that. Yeah. Um, I'll go four lengths, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm the not... The ground's very bad there. The <laughs> gonna be, distance is going to be exaggerated. Yeah, he wins this... And then people start getting carried away. I think he'll win this and then he'll go win the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. Not the sprint. The Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. I think that's what he'll do. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, already, it's already in that, isn't it? Didn't it? Yeah. Is it in that already? Yeah, he had it the win and you're in. Win and you're in race um, in, the, in France, wasn't it? So, yeah. So, agree. Yeah. All right. So, we're all whistle jacket. Easy game. Easy game. Whistle jacket on the bridle by four lengths, says Peter Michael. Happy days. Everybody else is compromised because of the ground. Um, that'll be a double. I know Peter doesn't agree, but that'll be a double for Aiden O'Brien at least. Maybe it'll be a treble. Maybe Puppet Master will have won. I think Brian Meansworth oh, will It could well won. be, yeah. Yeah, so it could be Aiden O'Brien setting more records. I wonder how many people in the media will be highlighting, what a great day for Aiden O'Brien. The champion trainer-elect does it again, or will they just not mention it? 
Because <laughs> you can really learn a lot about racing, about the things they do not want to talk about. And they don't want to talk about the fact that Aiden O'Brien is going to be champion trainer this year. I find that very interesting. I find it very, very interesting. And so I make a point of bringing it up every single time I'm on TalkSport. Because, you know, <laughs> just remind people, Willie Mullins is champion trainer of jumps. Aiden yeah, O'Brien is going to be champion else. trainer of the flat. By the way, Irish racing is in complete chaos. We're not going to have television coverage of racing because we're going to ban gambling advertising. And the HRI have got their fingers in their ears, covering their eyes, and telling all of us in the media, oh, no, don't worry, but it's not going to happen. No, 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 don't worry, but it's not going to happen. Yes, it is. So it's not like everything's flying and it's all rosy in the garden of Irish racing. No, it's absolute turmoil and chaos here. But we still have the champion trainer of jumps and the champion trainer of the flat as well. So yeah, <laughs> let's, uh, let's move on, shall we, to the aid advertisement from BetterHelp Therapy Online. What are your self-care non-negotiables? Maybe you never skip leg day or therapy day. When your schedule is packed with kids' activities, big work projects, and more, it's easy to let your priorities slip. Even when we know what makes us happy, it's hard to make time for it. But when you feel like you've no time for yourself, non-negotiables like therapy are more important than ever. If you've ever been in therapy, then like me, you know how beneficial it can be. But it's not just for those who've experienced major trauma. It's helpful for learning positive coping skills and setting boundaries. Therapy empowers you to be the best version of yourself. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a registered therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. With almost 5,000 therapists in the UK already, BetterHelp can provide access to mental health professionals with a wide variety of expertise. Visit betterhelp.com forward slash furlong today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com forward slash furlong. This is a paid advertisement by BetterHelp. Give online therapy a try at BetterHelp.com forward slash furlong to get 10% off your first month and get on your way to being your best. The came at your handicap. This song is for you for Emmett Mullins is now into 11 to 2 with Jeff Banks bet. And I think that's industry best price. Indeed it is. Uh, at least at the time of recording it is. Roy de France for Oshin Murphy and the Gosdens, an 8-1 to one shot. Godwin Son, 10s. Bo Pedro, 12s. Silver Sword, the same price, 12s. Uh, Liberty Lane, under a big old weight that might be that might affect him, but I actually quite like him. Uh, 14 to 1 shot. And Ryan Moore for Dermot Weld, 16 to 1 on Cordor. Peter Michael, this is a puzzle. Solve it for us, please. Good luck. Well, it's, it's a very difficult one. You have 30 seconds. Um, and Andy will be the man with the stats about the draw and everything else, so he'll probably be able actually, to direct. Andy, the- if you do have stats... You can help us out massively here with those to, to kick things off. I've got lots of stats. Oh, those. let's go. Lots and lots of stats. What, what do you want? I mean, the... Let's give you, let's give you a soundtrack. Oh. <laughs> I am the stat man. <laughs> <laughs> what was that song? Scatman. Or Scatman John. I'm Scat the Scatman. Man. Scatman Andy. Legend. Um, right. Wait. First stat. Last year's winner did hike 12 a uh, nine stone 12 um mm. but mm, i don't think that will happen again liberty lane let's just say that might be the downfall with that one really you want sort of nine stone five to be your cutoff or less so nine of the last 10 take out astro king last year of one with nine stone five or less so yes. i think that knocks out liberty lane the power horse the the, the Fox, uh, Cordor, Cordor uh, Dual Identity, and uh, La Trinidad. They're the, they're the ones at the top of the weights, I think, that carry more than nine stone five. So that's your first one. Draw, really, you want to be sort of mega high if the stats are to be believed. Last the year's 20s. winner came from 30. Well, yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, last year's winner came from 35. One before that, 26, 21, 25, 29, 21, 29, 28. Yeah, so all of the last eight have been 21 or higher, which will knock out, uh, you know, 20 horses, basically, <laughs> if, if, you're gonna, if you think that's going to carry on again. Uh, um, and age is the other super-duper stat in the, in the Cambridgeshire. Um, last horse 
aged seven or was a horse called Rambo's Hall, which you may have come across back in your early days, 1992, ridden by Dean McEwen. I remember um, it well. I was 10 years of age and I had a Fiverr Lucky 15 going on. <laughs> did you? <laughs> well, Jeremy Glover trained it. it won a well, hold on a second. Wait, 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 wait. You did a Fiverr Lucky 15 at the age of 10? D- of course I didn't. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that'd be like a thousand pounds these days. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But anyway, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> like seventy-five age. quid as a ten-year-old going into the bookies. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but yeah, look, that that age stat stretches back. I mean, I can't even do the maths. But nineteen ninety-two, whatever that is, how many how many years that is? Twenty-two years um, ago. But he, and you can. Uh, even if you go a bit further back than that, there was only one other horse that was that was older, and that was in 1980. Who was, was an eight-year-old. So, look, cut a long story short, you want something that's six or or lower, really, in terms of age. Um, there's been a few three-year-old winners, so would totally rule those out either. So, there there you go, really. You know, weight, age, um, draw. There's, there's, a, there's sort of you know you sort of whack all those as I keep saying before. Well, well thanks a stat. bunch, Andy. You've just completely destroyed Dermot Weld and Ryan Moore's chance of winning this race with Cordor. Well, That's... Got lot, they got the, well, they got the age stat against them, and they because it's an eight year old, and they've got nine stone eight. Yeah, the weight, they, so. the weight's against them as well. The draw is good. Ryan Moore is obviously draw. good. Dermot Weld's good, but the form is pretty it's decent like, as well. As as we as we whacked around last week with old. Um, you know, the guy that wrote that article, um, what's his name again? Mark Holder. Mark Holder. Um, he, 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 yeah, there are stats for and against the, the world horse, admittedly, but there's a couple of hefty ones, you know. If you think, if he thinks, you know, he's going to be the, 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 the first eight-year-old winner since 1980, then, you know, crack on and, and back it and it might happen. But for me, I've, I've got, we've got all those reruns of, of the race that an eight-year-old or seven-year-old hasn't won it, apart from Rambo Hall, obviously. But, um, that's I don't know. That's that's what I'll be clinging to, and I don't know if you want to go back to Peter, but I'll, I'll, I'll or the the sort of three or four that I've come out with 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 the stats. I mean, there are there are I don't know, yeah, because there's 35 runners in it, you can sort of end up still with about eight or ten horses, you know, that tick yeah. most of these. The three for just for my for the purpose, majestic won this in couple of couple of years ago, 2022. Only three pounds higher than when it won Shannon Horse. The only downside is it hasn't actually won a race since winning the game show in 2022. So, a bit of a neg there. But fourth last year as well in the race, they were definitely, this would have been the target. Um, likes the track. Form figures here are first nine, four, five, four. Soft ground will be fine. Um, yeah, and, and a horse, a horse back in the day called Brave Angel actually won it and then lost it and then won it back again. So it is possible. Draw 36, maybe. So that's absolutely fine. Next one, Rono. Been running well all year, consistent. 1 1, 3 2 5 this year. Fifth last time at York. Uh, definitely will stay a bit further than this, which will be an asset in the ground. Uh, dropped a pound from its York run last time as well. Ross of Ryan rides. Um, so yeah, I think that one will run well. And then the the, the last one of my sort of trio of, of picks is going to be uh, a horse called Mister King that only ran last week, last Saturday, I think, seven days ago. But if you watch that race back, it was f- finishing super duper at the end, um, mm-hmm. only up a pound for that. I just think that I don't know the extra trip here will be fine. It, it's, it's run okay on soft in the past. Um, and yeah, I just think that, I don't know. I just think that Mr. King here, he's drawn well as well. I just want to double check where it's drawn, but I'm pretty sure it's high. 33. 33. Yeah. yeah. Four year old ticks that gets a nice <clears throat> weight racing weight, which is eight stone 12. And last time it had, I think 10 pounds more than that in actual, you know, racing weight to carry. So it's going to feel, um, you know, a, a lot less on its back here as well. So, yeah, they're Majestic, Rono, Mr. King. I'll throw three darts at those three, I think, based on the trends. This is by no means a criticism because I really like your analysis. Um, this is just an observation. I spent hours going through this and none of the three I have were even mentioned by, 
<laughs> which I just uh, we have access yeah, to the okay. we both have access to the exact same data, and yet we've come to completely different considerations, which means means I'm even more interested to hear what Peter Michael's going to say because I have a feeling that Peter might not mention mine either. So who who is well, on your I short mean, list? It's a thirty thirty five on a handicap, which you know bottom of ground. It's not going to be easy, so I won't take too long going over it. Um, yeah, you have to put, even though he has to prove he, he'll stay the trip. Norwalk Havoc will would love will love this ground. The He's first horse mentioned. That's one of yours, is it? Yes. Yeah. Well, there we go. Um, so he's got a good draw. Um, he's, he's got to have a chance, but look, I mean, we're talking about a 35 runner handicap here. Um, I also have to put up, uh, my old horse. Well, not my old horse, but a horse I like Tolstoy. He's around 50 to one. Whether or not he'll get home a mile and one on heavy ground. I don't know, but at the prices, you definitely have to throw a few quid on him. He'll go on the ground. He's ran decent races on it before. Uh, put a line through the last run he just took off with Che Farmer. And up to then, he'd done absolutely nothing wrong. He's edging up in the weights. You know, he's gone to 91. I, I still think he's very capable of running a big race off 91. But the concerns are if he'll be too keen and if he'll get home over nine furlongs and heavy ground. If he settles early on and handles the very heavy ground, even though he's form on softest ground, you know, he, he could run a big race at 50 to 1. So I'd, I'd be putting something on him, yeah. And Nora Cava could be the other one I'd be looking at. But I, for my own pick, I'll have to go Tolstoy at 50 to 1. But there's major concerns about the stamina. Well, 50 to 1 is enough to make those major concerns yeah, fade away. It, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's a that's a pretty reasonable compensation to be getting. Um, I, I'd, I'd be concerned about the ground for Cordor, but he'd be... If it's heavy, that could be a problem. Soft ground, he's run very well on, so that wouldn't be an issue at all. He's been running really well in big field handicaps. I know Andy is gone, but he can't. Um, he's run very well in big field handicaps all season. He went very close in the yeah, World Cup. He loves big field handicaps. This is his. This is what he loves to do. Slightly concerned. And it's that, a good jockey. What, what I sorry to uh, interrupt you, Dermot, but that's a very eye catching booking, isn't it? First time Ryan Moore's ridden him. It, well, Ryan Moore. It's, yeah. It's it's a slight concern that Chris Hayes doesn't come over, so I'm wondering what he's riding at the Curra. Um, because he must feel like he's got a real big chance to not come over, or yeah, or something else has happened. I doubt it though. Um, but look, he's rock solid. He's a sixteen to one shot, I think, with Jeff right now. Is that right? Have, have they changed? Yeah, sixteens. Um, He's run his best race of the season last time out in the Irish Cambridgeshire, which he won last year. He was fourth in that last time out. He's well drawn in stall 28. Rain shouldn't be an issue for him, I don't think. He's a scumbag each way, bet. I think, in this. He might not win, but he'll go real close. Um, I'll save Norwalk Havoc. I, I'm very interested in Under Siege. I'm slightly concerned about the ground. He was beaten by this, the now new star with City of Troy, uh, destined for only one more race. Economics beat him on his first run, so he bumped into one there. He's then bumped into another one on his second start when he's beaten by subsequent Group 3 winner, lead artist. That saw him get a mark of 94, despite the fact that he was beaten at odds on on his third start. Given way too much to do. Way too He had no chance on that third start. He might have been beaten at odds on, but watch how that race panned out. Forget about it. Game over. Um, way too much to, to do that day. The first and second have both gone on to win races since. He was keen and he hung to the left when he won a mile maiden at Chelmsford. Wasn't suited at all by a slowly run race that day. Still managed to go and win. The third home has gone on to win a novice since. Last time out, he was sent off favourite for his handicap debut at Chester. Blew the start and had no chance after that. He's off the same mark of 94. Economics is now rated 123. Lead artist is 112. There's potential that he's very well handicapped here, potentially, and he just seems to me like a clumsy, green, awkward old sod of a horse who will relish a big field handicap and a strong pace, and there's a lot of horses who want to go forward here. Norwalk Havoc, who we'll talk about in a second, uh, Roy de France, Crackshot, James McHenry, Bala Makara, they all want to go forward, Anna Deleep, Liberty Lane, Epsgard, Watch Your Matey, This Song Is For You, Tamaris Fox, Empire State of Mind, Silver Sword, Tolstoy, 
uh, waiting all night. They all like to sit in behind the lead or at least press the leader. So on paper, this should be a red hot pace and that's going to suit under siege. Big time. Strong pace. Learn from last time out. Well drawn in stall 35. Same draw as last year's winner, Astro King. Potentially well handicapped. I like him an awful lot. Under siege at a double figure price. I think he's 16s. 14s now with Jeff Banks bet. I think that's fair. And Norwalk Havoc comes into the race with big field experience. That was a big, big run at Galway. And interestingly, kept fresh for this race ever since. Holly Doyle was booked to ride him during the week. She comes off. Jim Crowley gets on. I really like that jockey booking. Big field handicap experience. Good performances in black type races earlier in the season. And running for a trainer who could be doing better form-wise, but she's deadly in these big handicaps in the UK. Norwalk Havoc and Under Siege are my two big plays. Corridor is a speculative each-way play as long as you're prepared to overlook the fact that he's got nine stone eight and he's eight years of age, but uh, I see him as, as a rock-solid one. Anybody else to mention before we head off? Uh, well, I mean, I think we should probably mention the fav, shouldn't we? Because it's just been smashed up all week, isn't it? Um, this song is for you. Obviously, Emmett Mullins. I mean, look... Who Norwalk Havoc yeah. and Cordor both have form with and are bigger prices. Yeah, exactly. I mean, well, la- last year there was a even shorter price favourite, wasn't it? That uh, Greek order went off at of five Ooh. to two. Or this this is it? a and graveyard for those kind of horses. Yeah, I mean, the the fav stats are... Let's have a quick look. I mean, four of the last 22 favourites. It's not that bad considering the you know competitiveness of it, but 15 of the last 22 have been unplaced. So... Um, but yeah, I mean, look, if you was on earlier in the week or whenever, uh, uh, you know, tens or, or or bigger or whatever, then then yes. But six to one, I mean, you've got to be a bit mad to be going at that kind of price in a 35 horse race. But Crazy. Um, but, you, you know, everyone knows what, what Emmett Mullins is like over here. He ran National the Shunter and, uh, you know, Noble Yates in the National and the Shunter and the Cesaro, which obviously, but... Colin Keane's over here. Obviously, he's riding Babouche, so he, he's you know going to get a leg up here. And I think they they said, didn't they, that they weren't even expecting it to win uh, a couple of weeks ago when it when it won at the Curra, and it sort of just went in. And they were like, oh, that was a surprise. And it's only gone up four pounds. So draw seventeen should be all right. But you know, it's just it's just the, the value thing. And I suppose the only other one to sort of just throw in there is. The fact that Gosden is, is, you know, if you like the trainer stats, he's the man in this race. He's won it five times and twice in the last six years. Um, and he's got that Roy de France with Oshin Murphy on, which he has ridden it before, but it's interesting that Schumark was on it last time mm. when he was travelling quite well and then just didn't quite pick up at the end. But, you know, it's unexpected. I don't, I don't know about that, Andy. I'd have to put that race down to jockey error. The horse should have won that day in my mind. I agree. Yeah, he should have yeah, won. Yeah, yeah, and that's, as much as I'm pulling for Schumark to keep going, you, you can't be given rides like that. You know, a, a normal top-class stable jockey for Gosden would have won that day in that horse. I yeah, backed yeah. the winner, by the way. And I'm still saying that um, yeah, Schumark should have won. won. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but then that, that sort of, that's, that's a plus then, really, isn't it? I mean, you know, we could be sitting here looking at a horse that's got, a, you know, two ones next to its name. It's only had four runs. Uh, potentially, you know, it's only won one of them, but should have won two of those, as, as, as you said. Uh, Murphy's ridden it before, and he's won on it before. But again, you, you know, it's no, it, everyone's picking up on this as well. You know, it's not, there's no great value there. It's drawn 25, which is fine. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you know we it's no secret about the Gosden record in this race so um, so so yeah but it's just it's just a value H- Haggis has never won it and he's got that Godwinson um, and then the ones drawn low um, Bal Bacara which would probably be front running won't it consistent but it's, it'll be a bit of a job to stay there um, in that ground over this trip so I'm not sure about that either but I think the draw is going to be against it so yeah look I think we've got what. Five or six there between us, haven't we? <laughs> so, but in a race like that, you, no harm in yeah. you know? We could have another 20 and still not have the winner. That's yeah, the al- race although race. I will say, Noro Kavak is coming in for some support here. You're still getting 14s as we record with Jeff Banks. but it, It's I'm, interesting that they put tongue, tongue tie and cheek pieces on him first time. Uh, for the Galway Mile, I'd be more, you know, the tongue tie is more interesting than the cheek pieces. So that mm. would worry me a little bit on 
very heavy ground if, if there's some sort of wind issue there, you know? Yeah. But look, I don't know. I'm just s- stating. But he's one on heavy and he's one on soft. Bad. I know, but the fact that they put a tongue tie on him, it's just a little bit worrying. But look again, he's a, we're not talking about a four or five to one shot. We're talking about a what twenty sixteen to one shot. When was the last Irish winner of the Cambridge? Was it early noughties? Late. Nineties? Char- Tony 90s? Martin and Charles Burns, was it? Ni- no? nineteen ninety nine. Wow, okay. With, um, oh, wow. a Tony Martin horse called She's Our Mare. Ridden by oh. recently retired Franny Norton. Hey, Franny. What a legend Franny, Franny Norton is, by the way. I really enjoyed interviewing him. Yeah, that was my yeah, first time talking to him. Absolute yeah. legend. I was so pleased yeah, from yeah. that he got the hat trick at Chester. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, he had, a, he had a good time, did he? With three winners. One was it one for Gary Moore, and was it, I can't remember now, um, Haggis. Was it Haggis had one? I can't um, remember. Anyway, yeah. yeah, played to him. Um, and and yeah. for Charlie Johnston as well. His last, his last ever ride was for the Johnston Yard and it was a winner. That was right, yeah. Um, so, yeah, look, the last Irish winner was 1999. So, I don't know, obviously, how many have tried since then. And 30 well. years of hurt ended when Nora Cava comes storming up the hill. But, you know, look, that, as I said, you know, with, with, with the stats and stuff, there are, you know, if you cling to the weight, the draw and the age, those ones, there are still probably about 10 that you're left with. And, yeah. look, your, your pick... You know, the Jesse Aronson is does tick a lot of those. You know, it's drawn twenty six, uh, the weight's fine nine four, uh, and it's and it's a three year old. We've had a, two or three three year olds. It, it, you know, so the, it, I certainly wouldn't put you off that in terms of the stats, hundred um, percent. So yeah, and he's still an unexposed three year old, but he has plenty of experience, and crucially, he's got that big field experience as well. Which finishing in front of this song is for you and Cordor, I think, given the fact that this song is for you is a six to one shot, and he's. 14s with Jeff Banks bet. Yeah, I'll take Nora Kavak all day, son, all day. Andy, follow up your 10 to 1 winning nap last week. Who is the big bet of the weekend? Uh, uh, right, I'm I can either go big in the Cambridgeshire or we can play it safe and go back to a but we're on a on a little we had fought a, a port of Ventura before that, didn't we? So yeah. yeah. I think we're all in agreement. Whistle jacket of the shorties is is gonna be, you know, on everyone's radar in terms of nap, doubles, trebles, all that kind of palaver. But if you want a bigger price nap, then I think this Mr. King, just based on the fact how it ran last week at air, if you watch it back, it looked like it was had a bit more to come at the end. And it's only, I think, his third run for, for the Ian Jodding camp. It used to be trained by Ger Lyons, I think, in, in, um, in Ireland. So, yeah, look, that's going to be about 20s. So we'll have a little each way dabble on that as well shall we I'm a, look, look, so we've got a nap and an MB maybe to that this week oh yeah right? absolutely yeah so your nap is whistle jacket and the next best uh, Mr. next best there we go 20s you can get 20s 20 next best you know this is going to happen now. That, that horse is going to go and win that's what's going to happen now it is yeah but <laughs> Peter Michael your nap and your next best for the weekend Oh Jesus! Um, wasn't counting on the next best, but um, I'm going to be boring. I'm going to say whistle jacket, even money. That'd be the nap because he he should win. Uh, next best, I'll go with Babouche. Okay. Again, boring. Okay. Being conservative this week, but I'll go with them. It's it's you're coming to the tie time of year. Ever like racing is very tricky at this time of year. It's, yeah. Especially going once this month ends, everything becomes even more difficult. So. I think you could get a good few big price horses winning this weekend, the big handicaps and stuff like that. Hopefully, Tolstoy will be one, but I don't know if he'll get home. But yeah, I think Whistle Jacka will win, and I think Babouche will, you know, I think it's a tour and a race, and I hope she goes on the ground. If she goes on the ground, I think she, she could get it done just ahead of Lake Victoria. Okay, uh, my nap and my next best is a lucky 15 or lucky 31, because I'm a sucker for punishment, obviously. Law of Design, 20s in the Royal Lodge. Yes, please. Lake Victoria, sorry, Peter, in the Cheveley no Park. Problem. Whistle Jacket just wins. Norwalk Havoc, sorry, Andy, in the Cambridgeshire. And Trinity College, that's the lucky 31 for Saturday. Is there more winners to come? Or are we going to be feeling very sorry for ourselves this time next week? From Peter Michael, Andy Newton, and me, Ms. Kennedy, look after yourself and each other. God bless.
The Final Furlong Podcast is proudly brought to you by Jeff Banks Bet. Get up to 500 pounds refunded as real money for new Jeff Banks online accounts after your first month of betting. Use promo code FFP500 at jeffbanks.bet and buy BetterHelp. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Our listeners get 10% off your first month. So give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com forward slash F-U-R-L-O-N-G.